With the recent sell-off breaking to fresh weekly lows, my view has now shifted to fishing for a end of a correction low and macro move up to follow. So in this video here, we will be reviewing the big picture of cryptocurrency and also diving into the short term and stepping it up into some higher time frame analysis too. But before we dive into all of that, please remember that I'm not a financial advisor. So always do your own due diligence and research and past results are not indicative of future performance. So before we get to the macro Elliott wave count, the end of a correction, there's some capitulations signs as we speak i will start out with the lower term time frames here on bitcoin this is the one hour chart and then step it up to the higher time frames until finally getting to that big picture elliott wave count and correction thesis we've been tracking so this is the one hour chart and in my previous video we we're looking at the potential of a breakdown of these three lows but how it was more likely going to be a false break because the variance between the lows was a little bit too big for my liking typically i want to be seeing really tight ranges or tight prices when we're looking at breakouts of uh, support or resistance so in this case here we can see we had the breakout then we had the false break signal i share with you all the time that's a breakdown and then a close back above the breakdown zone and then of course from that point forward we had the price leveling out and we started to bounce away putting in an intermediate bottom just like we spoke about ahead of time before obviously bouncing up to around 64.4 and then putting in another sell-off so as you can see after we got that breakdown we had another three bottoms right around the same price and this time they were much more close in uh, in price there there wasn't much variance between them and then we got a very genuine breakdown falling around two thousand dollars in a matter of hours you can see we had the breakdown we had the close below and then we had the continuation lower right down to that next pivot point so these yellow lines are the pivot points i've been sharing with you guys for probably more than a month now and they haven't changed and they do act as buying and selling zones. so you can see here we hit that pivot point from the overside and i'm always expecting buying to come into the market when pivot points are a kind of approach from the overside when they're approaching the underside i'm expecting selling pressure to pick up which as you can see here we had selling pressure and of course and we had the continuation lower now it doesn't mean that every single time the line is hit we're going to be seeing buying or selling come into into play it's about looking out for volume to come in then what the closes do and then for that actual reversal to take place so you can see in this situation here we clearly had volume come into the market we had the close above the pivot point and then we started to get a reversal of the trend now this is the one hour time frame so by the time you're watching this the price may have actually continued lower already but it has obviously held the market up for a number of hours now so any analysis that you're doing it is relative to whatever time frame you are looking at so that's really really important to keep in mind so for our one hour analysis here we definitely have signs of a potential low in the making maybe this holds up for a day or so of course time will tell but what i really want to see on our one hour chart is to get back above the breakdown zone and of course for some higher lows to retest those next pivot points overhead so of course that price point comes in at around sixty one thousand six hundred dollars let's see if we can get back on top of that zone and then we'll be contending with those next levels overhead coming in at around sixty three thousand dollars for round numbers now for us to see some good continuation on the four hour and potentially even daily time frame, I want to see price action above $63,200, this orange circle here, because getting on top of that zone, we will technically be strong on top of our trend line and on top of our 50% level, just showing that the momentum has likely shifted and we could be seeing a very good move away from that price point. So all of that said, do keep in mind that our trend is still down. We haven't had a break on the one hour trend, although that could be coming very, very soon. So let's see what happens in terms of this next overhead resistance and if we can actually start to get a flip. Up now to our four hour time frame where you can see that we are down on our four hour two bar chart still and our daily trend is still down so we have to respect the trend but at the same time also respect the support the most important support in the market has been that sixty thousand dollars basically everyone is well aware of that support zone and every time we have come down to hit that level we have found buying come into the market on increased volume and a bounce away so for as long as that happens we have to expect it to continue to happen until it doesn't and that's just really keeping it that simple so we've hit that support zone we've started to found some buying pressure move away but we're still yet to see any confirmation on our lower term time frames and of course we still haven't seen any trends flip just yet so while we have support in the market let's just see if we can get that momentum shift which again we haven't seen yet but it could happen very very soon now the other pivot point i shared with you in the previous video was this trend line here and how i really wanted to see some price action above the line to give me confidence that maybe the momentum was shifting and all we had was a headbutt against that line there was very clear selling pressure come in and we retested it again and then of course there was a pretty savage sell-off around four to five thousand dollars in just a matter of hours before hitting the support zone from the underside so this level does remain to be a very important uh, pivot point here for our four hour chart coming in at around sixty four and a half to sixty five thousand dollars depending when we do hit it if in fact we do uh, come back up to that price point so do keep that one on your chart as well so just to keep things really simple that's the line i'm watching for my four hour time frame for us to start to see some better momentum shifts which may translate onto the daily and weekly charts all right now this is the daily time frame here you can see that we've obviously sold off we're starting to 
bounce back above. We yet to get the close on the day, which will be coming very, very soon. But that 60K just remains to be the most instrumental price point in the market. Our one day two bar and our weekly trends are neutral. So they're not down, they're not up. There's just some indecision. And that's no surprise why we are stuck within a pretty big range between around 60K and $74,000. But of course, we wanna be seeing those trends flip to up to uh, reduce the chance of a larger correction coming beneath that 60K zone. Now, of course, we're very close to 60K still. So odds are in favor of a further breakdown at some point. It is just gonna be a matter of whether those trends can flip and we start to see some fast momentum away from this zone to get back on top of some of the pivot points I've been discussing. Now, because we haven't seen any extreme amount of volume and a sharp bounce away, exactly like we saw on this bar here, you can see a huge red bar, huge red volume, and then the price snapped back and continued higher. We saw something very similar on this bar here, large amount of volume, price snapped back immediately. We yet to see something similar take place yet. We have some pretty good volume here, but generally speaking, it is just declining, showing the general lack of interest, which means we have a higher chance that the price will chop around and likely even continue lower, but it's always a moving target. And if we do start to see some swings break and some momentum shift, then we just have to go with what the market is telling us. We're just looking at a broad read of the market based on what the volume has been doing and what the price action has also been doing. So as for our daily analysis, keep 60,000 bucks on your chart as one of the most important levels. And let's see if we can start to break on top of some previous breakdown zones. Up now to the weekly time frame where we have that same 60K pivot point on the chart. You can see if we do break down from 60K, there's a bit of open ground all the way down to around $52,000. So that is my macro downside target if we do continue to see our short-term trends stay down. You can see on this chart that our weekly two bar and our monthly trend are clearly up. We haven't had any breaks of these trends in this entire correction so far. But if we do see a continuation beneath 60K, I do think 52K is in high contention. Of course, we do have around 56 in between there. So we will see what the price action does if volume comes back into the market and we start to see some flips on those lower term timeframes around that price point first. But if not, that 52K wick would just be beautiful to flush a lot of people out of the market but if we do see that, I really want to see a fast bounce and a strong close back above the 50% level. Otherwise, there's an increased chance that we will actually continue lower from that point. But we are still at $61,000 at the time of this video. So there's no point getting too far ahead of ourselves. We do have that support beneath the market and we still have the 50% as well. So let's just tackle this one one day at a time to see what the market action does. Now, before we take a look at the macro market structure and the Elliott wave, I just want to take a quick look at a few altcoins for you guys. You can clearly see that we are in a corrective pattern. And by corrective pattern, we are looking at a potential of an A, B, C. That's what we wanna see in corrections. We don't wanna be seeing too much extension in this wave here, because that would increase the chance of a larger move lower. So of course that could still happen, but we are just tracking this one one day at a time, as I like to say. We do have support at 50% for Ethereum at around $2,900, with that next 50% level coming in at around $2,500. So a few downside targets to be looking out for. And what we wanna be seeing for the bulls to take back control of ETH is a break back above around 3,200, where we had that breakdown zone, this orange box on the chart. And even better, of course, if we can get back on top of our trend line at 50% level, but the most immediate level overhead is 3,200 bucks. And we are still down on our daily time frame here, which we wanna see a break of that trend. Solana is also hanging around on a 50% level at around 130 bucks. Beneath the market, we have around 110 and that nice psychological $100 price point as well to be tracking. We are now down on our one day one bar and one day two bar, which increases the chance we'll also be turning down on our weekly time frame. But for that to come about, we could actually see a bounce take place first and then a continuation but again, we don't want to be getting ahead of ourselves. We do have some signs of a capitulation as we speak, by the way, of this huge red bar here and massive volume. So let's just see if we can start to see a momentum shift away from this price point and some price action to confirm that. But until that comes about, do respect the trends and look at those underside support levels, which you should always be tracking on your charts. AVAX is one which has been struggling a little bit more and we were ahead of this one here when we started to see those trends change direction first. We broke down from 50% levels first and we've seen a stronger move to the south side of the market. Now, the danger for AVAX is that we are now beneath a couple of important 50% levels were obviously well below a trend line and we have that final support coming in at around 27 to 28 bucks if that zone there does break down i would expect a cascading sell-off but before that comes about we still have to respect the support we have a bit of a capitulation on our hand we just want to see that momentum shift away from the one day one bar and one day two bar so that we can start to get a bit of confidence that maybe buyers are stepping back into the market and we're going to be rounding off but until that comes about of course those trends are clearly down now for a quick look at injective which is bucking the trend somewhat as you can see the one day one bar trend has turned up 
but we're still down on the one day two bar trend and we're stuck beneath a very important 50% level. This one comes from the current all time high down to the cycle bottom. So we are technically weak on our macro 50% level. There's an attempted change in momentum at the moment, but until we can start to see some price action above the breakdown zone of around $30, just for round numbers, I do treat anything up until that price point as just a short term pity bounce until we really start to see some solid signs of a shift in momentum. So again, this is one I'm gonna be tracking really closely on the channel. There is a chance of a large period of distribution and failure to get back on top of the breakdown zone would mean we're likely gonna be down for a little while longer. But again, the price action is always the king. But we'll see what the trends and momentum can do in terms of the recent sell-off that we've just seen. Now for a look at our macro market structure where I use Elliott Wave to really pinpoint where we are in the cycle or at least increase the chance of knowing where we are. Now I do believe we're firmly in a wave four now that we have broken down from that weekly swing bottom. That would mean we've seen a corrective pattern A or a wave A down, wave B up, and now we're in a wave C down. So at least for me, I'm shifting my attention towards fishing for the end of a wave four, which means we can get in close to the low and prepare for that macro wave five up, which will be calling the end of the bull market cycle. Now there's no saying that this is exactly what's gonna be happening because of course, nobody knows the future. We're just looking to play the probabilities in our favor. And at least for me, this is playing ball almost perfectly throughout this entire bull market cycle. So we'll see if this pattern and market structure does continue to hold true or if the market conditions change and we shift into a different phase of the cycle, which again, I'm not seeing any signs of that happening yet. So this is still the most accurate structure I've seen to date. And we will continue to track this one really, really closely. Now in terms of psychology and what typically happens within the waves, which is just so important when we're looking at market sentiment and just the overall macro structure in wave fours, it's just a normal retracement, a healthy retracement within a larger bull market structure, which would mean this is the healthy correction we've been looking for. And we are still within a larger five wave structure, which would complete the Elliott wave cycle, or at least the Elliott wave count. Now, what typically happens in a wave four is that most people or the masses were getting way too bullish too late in the wave three, buying right around the tops. And by the time wave four comes around, all of these people will be showing a loss on their position because they got bullish too late. And by too late, I simply mean too late in the wave three. Now, what happens in a wave five is that we start to see the low form. All the people that were way too late here just held on to their losing position. And eventually they start to show a profit on the position they bought at the end of wave three. And what this leads to is a mass amount of greed as all of these people think they're a genius now and they start to go in heavier and heavier towards the end of the cycle until ultimately putting in too much money too late which means any slight correction from that point forward puts everything they've bought into a massive losing position because again they've went in too hard too late after thinking they're geniuses for holding a winning position or at least letting this position turn into a winning position once we broke to fresh highs now what that leads to is again overconfidence people buying too much too late and they end up holding on to that position again throughout the entire bear market cycle until they eventually capitulate at the lows. It happens every single time to do with fear and greed. And I suspect this time is gonna be exactly the same. So at least for now, we have to just wait and see if we are gonna be getting a wave four, wherever that comes about. It doesn't mean it has to come about now. We could continue to bleed out for a little while before we actually do reverse. But in terms of the overall market structure and sentiment, I still believe this is most likely what's gonna be happening in the bull market and where we currently sit, at least for the time being. So until our short-term trends start to flip, because they are still clearly down and we're at risk of going lower, I will be tracking the macro market structure really, really closely. And of course, keeping up to date with those short term changes of trend, those flips and dips and everything in between. But that's all I've got for you in today's market update. If you don't want more from us in TIA crypto, hit that link at the top of the video description. That's it from me, wishing you more health, wealth, and happiness. And until next time, I'll catch you then.